Hello and welcome back. My name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ here in Western Australia. On this channel, we're dedicated to spreading the gospel and explaining the scriptures to people. If you want to help in this endeavor, there are three easy things that you can do. First of all, you can subscribe to this channel. That's a huge help. Secondly, you can hit the like button. And thirdly, you can share this video uh, on your social media or with your friends in any way you can. All these, all these three things are a tremendous help for us. Today we're going to be studying the subject of the temptation of Christ. Now this is found in Matthew chapter 4. And in that chapter we read about Jesus having fasted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and then the devil came to test him, to tempt him. And so we start our reading, well let's look at the context in chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 says that after being baptized Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lightning on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is one of those magnificent passages in the Bible when we can three, see the three persons of the, the Godhead. Jesus the Son, having been baptized, rising up out of the water. The Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove on Jesus. And then the Father saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is... Just before Jesus starts his, will, his, his, uh, his ministry, and before that, he goes out into the wilderness. And that's where we pick up the, the passage in chapter 4 and verse 1. Notice what we read. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered him and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now why are these passages written here? Why, why, do, we, why do we learn about this temptation of Jesus? Well, it's to show us how our Lord and Saviour dealt with temptation and through learning about that, we can learn how we can deal with it. You see, Jesus had been fasting there. You can imagine him in prayer to his heavenly Father, preparing for what he was about to go through in his ministry. And at the time when he became hungry, when he was at his weakest, then the devil came to tempt him. He said, if you are the Son of God, make these stones turn into bread. You see, the devil's going to tempt us in just the same way. He's going to wait until we are at our weakest and find what is the most uh, difficult temptation to, to uh, withstand. And that's how he's going to tempt us. Well, what do we learn from how Jesus responded here? Well, first and foremost, we've got to recognize that he uses the Word of God, which the Hebrew writer calls the sword of the Spirit. It is the sword that with which we can counter these temptations of the devil. And he said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In our Bibles, that's what we read, the words of God. And that's how we live, that's how we have life eternal. The second temptation is found in verses 5 to 7. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, 
On the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So, see, uh, the devil was saying, well, why go through all this, these, these, this, this, this trouble for your, your ministry? Why don't we just go to Jerusalem now? You jump off the temple and the angels will save you when you'll descend to the, 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 the doors of the temple with these angels and everyone will see who you are. <laughs> oh, that's the devil speaking to you. But notice how Jesus responds. Again, it is written. He goes back to the word of God. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Trust in God and his way of doing it. The third temptation is found uh, in, in verse 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. And he said to him, all these things I, I give you, if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus came as king. He did not need the devil to, to provide him with all the kingdoms of this world. In fact, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He has this heavenly kingdom. And again, he went to the word of God to defeat Satan. Satan wants us to fall. He wants us to stumble. He wants us to be like him. But we don't have to be because we can understand that we need to understand how he works. James, in James chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, uh, puts it this way. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lusts. And when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. You see, we are all tempted. It's how we deal with the temptation. Jesus was tempted. But he did not fall to the temptation. Let's have a look at what, what uh, James says here in more detail. Verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. You know, when we start playing with these thoughts that come into our mind unbidden, when we think, oh, well, that would be good. I'm not going to do anything. Oh, but wouldn't that be nice? You know, when we entertain the thoughts that Satan puts us into our mind. We are, we are enticed and carried away by our own lusts. If we say no to our lusts, if we just refuse to even entertain a thought that follows them, we will cut sin short. But notice, verse 15, then when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. You see, when we start playing with these lusts, when we are carried away and enticed by them, the, 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 the lust is conceived and it gives birth to sin. And notice. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. We need to stop sin where it starts, in the thoughts of our mind. And we need to say, just like Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. In, in, in chapter 4, in verse 7, notice what uh, James says to us there. James 4, verse 7. Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, Satan is trying to get us to fall. He is attacking us all the time. But here, there are two things that James says we need to do. First of all, submit to God. And to do that, we need to know what God says. We need to read his word, we need to study his word, and we need to follow his word. Recognize we put God first in all things. We submit to God. Secondly, we resist the devil. Now, he's not talking about us having to wrestle the devil to the ground. He's not talking about us having to fight him with swords and knives and all that. But just resist him. We can do that by just saying no. 
as we mentioned before, saying, get behind me, Satan. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You see, the devil has no power if we do those two things. <laughs> you hear so many times, oh, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. You played around with the lusts that he put in his head. And that when that lust was conceived, it brought, for, uh, it brought forth sin. And when sin was accomplished, it gave us death. No, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, I hope this study has helped you. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please put them down in the comment section and we'll get right back to you. We look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.